Hello and welcome to Building the Blog, part 12. So here we're having a look at utilizing a Postgres database with our existing project. So we're going to install the Postgres, Postgres server and then connect it up to our Django project. So in this tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to migrate the data from our existing project to the Postgres database. That's more of an advanced topic. However, by the end of this tutorial, hopefully we've gone through some of the basic principles and features of the Postgres database, connected our Django project to it, and now we can start developing within this Postgres database. So for this series, you can just continue using the SQLite database. I wanted to move across to the Postgres database because it does in Django offer some different facilities. So in a previous tutorial, we looked at searching data or creating a search feature for our blog. So you may have noticed that was really kind of a basic search feature. So I wanted to utilize Postgres database so we could use a full text search. So here we could utilize much more advanced features like search vectors, search queries, and search rank to create much better search facilities within our blog. So that's the key driver of moving across to Postgres database here in this development environment. Other than that, we're pretty much going to have the same experience in this development environment using the previous database, our SQLite database. So let's just take a review of the installation process for Postgres SQL database on a Windows host. So head over to the Postgres website. You're going to obviously select the download option and then select the distribution that you need. So here we're going to be running Postgres on a Windows host. It is, I want to say it's a fairly similar process on all different distributions here, Linux, Mac and Windows. With Linux, you can download from the package manager, no doubt, and possibly the same with Mac OS. You could probably download Postgres potentially from the package or the store. So let's head over to Windows. This is a little bit difficult to um, see at first, but in actual fact, all we need to do is click on this link here, download the installer. So you can see here we have available 13 beta, but we're just going to go ahead and select the stable option of 12.4. And we're going to download this for a 64-bit Windows. So that's a fairly sizable download. It's a 200 meg download. Okay, so once downloaded, let's just go through the wizard and just select any options or just chat about any options that need to be changed. So I press next and then obviously select where I want to install. So here we've got a list of four pieces of software which we can potentially install. So just a quick review here of the options. We have the Postgres SQL server. That's the main database server. So we definitely want to install that. We then have PG admin four. So this is a graphical interface that allows us to build and manage and administrate our databases from a graphical interface. Then we have the stack builder. So the stack builder is a utility that provides a graphical interface that allows us to simplify the process of downloading and installing modules that can sometimes complement our database. And then finally, we have the command line tools, which pretty much describes what it is. It allows us to access and manage our database utilizing the command line. So let's just go ahead and install all of these. So press next, and then we have the data, de the data directory. So this is where our data is gonna be stored. So we're just gonna keep this the same there's no real benefit here on this local server that I'm running here to, to move this. Um, potentially, you might have a, a, a system for managing your data uh, separately. You might want to simplify this and maybe just put it directly on the C drive to make it easier to manage your database setup without having to go through this or to search through the, the folder structure here. But otherwise, just press next. So now we're asked for a password for the super user. So this is a an admin account that's going to allow us to access the database. Okay, so next up we have the port number. So this is the door, the service access door in your computer where we can access this server on your computer. So 5432 port is the default port. Um, there's no real need to change this potentially uh, at this point. It's worth noting this port number. 
Now, if you did want to change this number, you need to be careful because there are some ports that are utilized by other software. So you can't just randomly make a port number here. So be careful when you do change it. For the purpose of this installation and our blog project, we're going to maintain the default port number. So we can go ahead and change the location if we wanted to. Um, particularly important, obviously, on a production server to make sure that you've got the right date and time. Um, I'm just going to leave this to default for now and press next. OK, so we've got the pre-installation summary. So we're now ready to initiate the installation. So go ahead and press next and then next again for some reason and then just let it install. OK, and there we go. The installation is completed. I'm um, just going to keep that selected. The stack builder may be used to download and store additional tools and then just press finish. OK, so it says welcome to the stack builder. To begin, please select the installation you're installing software, blah, blah. So we've got the Postgres database, so we need to select that and then just press next. So here we've got a list of different applications that we can do now download. So at this point, there's nothing really that we need to download at this point. So we can just go ahead and press next. It says you must select one option to continue. Of course, we don't want to select any of these. Um, so let's just go ahead and cancel that. Okay, so go ahead and go to the start button, type in PG, and you'll see that there's a I'm not going to move the, the screen down, but you can you'll see that there's a a new application called PG Admin 4. So I'm just going to select that. That should open up the PG Admin, which is a graphical user interface for a Postgres database. So just two things to point out here. You can see that I'm being asked to allow Postgres to access the postgresadmin.org. So there shouldn't be a problem there. So I'm just going to press OK. So next up, let's now actually log into the database. So in addition to that window popping up there for the firewall, I now have the PG admin open up in a new tab in my browser. So I just need to type in my password. OK, so I'm not too sure what happened there. It didn't accept my password. So I selected reset the password and just allowed me to reset the password. And now I'm into the system. So you can see now we have the Postgres server is working. It's being monitored by our PG admin tool here. Um, notice that on the left hand side here, we have databases. Now we don't currently have any databases installed. So I guess that's the next thing that we now need to do is to create a database for our Django blog. So let's just go ahead and right click create and then database. So the database is going to be called uh, simple blog. And the owner is going to be, I'm going to be the owner. And I'm just going to comment. This is for the simple blog series. OK, so we save that. So we now have a database. So obviously what we're going to need to do now is add some tables. So next up, we need to install the Django package that's going to allow us to actually create the connection and manage the connection to a Postgres database. So this is the pip install Django PSYCOPG2. So go ahead and install that. And then next up, we need to go into the core of the project. So this is the core application with the setinspy file. So we're going to need to configure now our database. So previously, we've been using the SQLite database. It's right here on line 81. So we now need to override this default and configure our Postgres database. So here we have the configuration for a Postgres database. We have the engine, so we're defining that we're going to use a Postgres database. And then we have the name. So this name is referring to the, the, the database name that you created. So go back into the PG admin and you can see that we created a database here called simple blog. So mine's going to be simple blog. And then we have user and password. So obviously here I'm just working on a development environment. So in production, you wouldn't want to use the admin user 
as a user for the database. Because not only if someone finds out the username and password for the administrator, they then have access to the whole system. So ideally, you want to create a new user for individual databases. Obviously, those individual users will only have access to those individual databases. So just to get this blog database migrated for now, and because we're in the development environment, we're going to just use the super user. So if you select the simple blog in your PG admin at the bottom here, you can see what users have access to the database. If we right click and go to properties, again, there's some more general information. And we can see here that the database and the owner of the database is the Postgres user. So we go back into the settings and we're just going to change the user to Postgres and then just change the password to your password. Now the host is localhost because it's just on the local host here on my development server and then also the port. So if you remember the port was 5432 but in actual fact we don't need to use that. We're just going to use the default port. So we know that that is the default port so we don't need to put anything there. Of course if you have and you did change the port when you installed Postgres that's where you need to now type in that new port number. So now we've configured the settings in Django, we're just going to go ahead and just migrate the database. So manage Pi and then make migrations. Okay, and then we go ahead and migrate. And there we go. So now we've done that, let's go back into the simple blog database. So open up your browser in the PG admin. So let's go back into the schemas. And if we go drill down into the schemas, we have tables. We'll just move this across slightly. And inside of our tables, you can see all of our tables that we have created for our blog. So this just represents the first step. We have all the tables or the schema now for our database, we now need to migrate the data because all we've done at the moment is we've just created a new schema, a, a set of tables for our data. So now we need to move the data across. So you can see that in this system here, we can run queries. So if I right click and select query tool, it opens up the query tool here and I can run queries like this, for example, select all from blog post. So if I run a query like that, you can see there isn't actually any data yet in our database. So let's now go ahead and create a super user. Okay, so I'm just using admin and admin. So now we've made a super user. Let's go back into our database our simple blog database. So what we should have now, if we go over to the schemas and tables. So if I were just to right click and count rows, we can now see that we have one user. And then furthermore, if I right click and select view edit data, I can now see all the rows. So this is going to give me a view of all the rows. You can see I've just created a new user, the ID number one. We have username ID, is super user true? 